Hello and welcome, I'm Impact Friends and here we are with Radiata. It's another TensorRT web UI. It's like another stable diffusion web UI that can use TensorRT. And we are installing this because as you can see, you can do non-square images, you can change the size. So this has dynamic shapes. And yeah, in the previous automatic 1111, we can only do the square images. So now we are using this. And if you install this, you can also use Deep Floyd with it. So you can use the if model with that. And there is also another web UI called Volta ML that apart that it looks super cool. It has a fast API. And you can you can even create a Discord bot with this. So for development, it's a really cool thing to, to check out. So maybe I'm gonna make a video about installing this one. Previously, this was uh, called LSmith. I was using it. This thing is called AI Template. It's an acceleration uh, framework for for this uh, for stable diffusion and other other uh, models. So here we are, and we're gonna copy this uh, thing, the Git clone, and the repository for Radiata inside the Radiata folder. And then we use launch user.bat. And you can see here we are downloading the, the stable diffusion 1.5 model. So it takes a while to get. And as you can see here, now I have started it and I have the stable diffusion 1.5 there. But I'm going to show you a way to save a space in your machine and you can use your automatic 11, 11 modes, embeddings, LoRa's, and everything else in here too without, you know, having to install more models and that kind of thing. And for that, you're just going to go into the models folder in Radiata and delete all this LoRa, Embeddings, Hyper Network, delete all this. And then just open a CMD command prompt here with the search bar. And you're just going to paste these commands that I'm going to leave you in the description of the video. And this is to create sim links for for, for the folders of the automatic 11.11 models. To start uh, Radiata in TensorRT, you have to put this flag TensorRT here. And this will install TensorRT the first time. So you can see that it's installing the requirements. But it's failing because I forgot to, to uh, put the TensorRT folder. You can put, place this TensorRT folder anywhere. But the problem is the, the environment variables you need to link in the path environment variables for your system. As you can see here, I'm, I'm trying the Python commands to check if I had those right. And there is the bin and lib uh, folder from the TensorRT folder that you had to put here in the path and then it will work. As I show you there. You have here now put TensorRT again in here and save this because otherwise it will launch again with diffusers. And the next time you launch, it will be with the TensorRT. And yes, here we are with the TensorRT engine. We can build the engine. And in here we can select the batch size. I'm gonna select four. For the size, I'm gonna select uh, 768 by 768. And because it's a dyna dynamic shape uh, check mark uh, here, I can have moles from 256 to 1024. And this process will be lengthy, so it's probably taking like 20 minutes or half an hour to convert a mold. And just press the wrong, the wrong button here and it will start. This process here, it seems a bit easier than in automatic, but not really much different. And now it's building the engine and I will speed up the video or maybe cut and come back.
So yes, this took about 30 minutes to finish and I didn't have any errors or anything, so it went okay. Now we just need to reboot Radiata to, to start with the TensorRT model. So in here you can switch to TensorRT. And I'm gonna bring some uh, prompt here to, to start testing this. It, yeah, so this is just random just to, to check the speed of the TensorRT and if it, everything is working, if the model works. And the first time takes quite a while to, to start. Okay, so now we have here our first image. And I did an square first. Uh, another thing is that the, the preview here always appears like in squares, but when you go into the image browser, there is an image browser tab. Also, this thing is super simple that it only has a, a few tabs. And the setting is like accelerator and this just have one check mark. But you can see that the images are quite good, so... And here I'm testing with the 8 batch count and it's super, super fast. It goes about twice the speed that normal stable diffusion does. And you can see that they are all square images as I told you. And if you go into the image browser then they will be like... Uh, the aspect ratio is like I said there, like 640 by 960. And here they are. There is also a plugin for ControlNet that only works with diffusers and you can install it by just git clone it into your plugin folder. And here I have like a textual inversion from uh, WAS, which is a Battletech textual inversion. I'll be using this because um, TensorRT doesn't work with LoRa's, but you can use textual inversions. And I am starting in diffusers to check the speed and as you can see it's just 5.3, 5.4 at best. And it's much slower than the TensorRT version. And this does make a difference when you have like thousands of images to make. Or if you have users for your for your application, they are waiting for an image uh, breaks the immersion. So if you have something that can do twice the speed, it's a lot better. Here we can see the images. Another thing that I notice is like the TensorRT images are uh, they are like more complex than these ones that are made with the normal diffusers. I don't know if that has something to do with the TensorRT but it's the same prompt and the same the same settings everything and when I do TensorRT the image looks like more complex and overall I like it more I don't know if it's like probably my taste but if maybe someone can confirm it so yeah you have to move out the, the plugin from your the ControlNet plugin out of your plugin folder 
At the moment, that's the only plugin available for this Radiata web UI. So you need to move that out to start in terms of RT or you're going to get a failure. And as you can see here, I have the settings all the same and it's going like to 9.7, 9.6. It's a lot faster. These are the Tensor RT images and you can see that they have uh, more detail. Because that went super fast, I just decided to make another bunch of images here. Because I'm liking a lot of this textual inversion by Was is the Battletech uh, file that I told you. And he has a lot of things in his profile, so just go and check it up. And the textual inversion is like, uh, it's a super powerful technique. And we can explore that a bit more. I'm going to try to make a tutorial about it because everyone is on Loras now. But the textual inversion has some pretty cool th things on it. a good thing to explore and here we can see in the image browser we can see all the images that I've been generating I really like how they came up so probably gonna put some of them in the in the in the thumbnail for the video and let me know what you think about this uh, te tensor RT technique if you are going to be using this or I think it's a lot better for the for the user that has like a lot faster if you are like doing like a language model thing like my last script and you combine it with this you're going to have a, a lot faster response so it will be better for immersion yeah please let me know in the comments if you like to see more videos about this maybe the deep floyd installation when they solve the the issue in the third stage um, yes uh, or let me know what you want to see because i want to start making more videos about how to actually do images how to edit the image and how to make good generations Right now, I'm not I'm not really eff putting effort on doing the image because I'm trying to show more the installation. But when I do the image, I just try to do a lot of work instead, <laughs> instead of just you know getting the first thing that I see. But, but yeah, that's that's a kind of serious work, the more artistic thing that I want to be doing. Um, yeah. Thank you for watching and, and please uh, share the video, subscribe or let me, let me know what you want to see next. Bye bye.